Hi, my name is Sally Hurst, and you may remember a while ago uh, I did a collaboration with Elizabeth Schoekert using her brushes, brushes like this that I use with my on and cold wax painting. Recently we decided to do another one using her tools and see to see how they work and respond to working on a gel plate, monotype. Uh, and so she has sent me a whole pile of lovely tools, okay? And I have had a ball creating mountains and mountains of papers using her lovely tools. Okay, to get some splendid effects. And I want to share my journey with you. And so she has sent me this fabulous collection uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth into having a play with them. But let's see what we have first. Now I confess there's a bit of paint on some of these because I couldn't resist having a little test run. Here's, here's one with a bit of paint on. Uh, but these are silicon, okay? Uh, and because they're silicon, it just comes off. Okay, silicon, nothing sticks to silicon. So any paint you get is just going to come off. All right, so that's the first thing to say. They have these beautiful handles uh, with her insignia here. But what I love about all of her tools is because she is an artist, she thinks really carefully about how you would hold her tools, how you might use her tools, uh, how beautiful they are. And it's that connection and the connection I had with her, the last set that I tested out for her and that I've used continually since is that her fact that I'm using something that is made by an artist for an artist and that just gives them an edge uh, so this is one we had a discussion about what kind of shapes i might like uh, and i quite like irregular as well as regular shapes and patterns so this is a nice one this is a super long one like an absolute beast of one and i can get some really lovely sweeps going with this one uh, down in size we have another one okay which has a regular pattern but it's it has differences within each of that. Okay, and again, sits beautifully in my hand and they're jolly light as well. So they're not gonna hurt too much to push around. Going down in size. Okay, another one. Some of them are more rigid than others, which make a difference to the kind of marks I get. Uh, this one, for example, uh, feels quite soft. That's only because it's a long cut. Okay, uh, so it's more like a brush. A silicon brush I suppose and then I've got this little guy okay with little tiny lines in so that's going to leave the lines on the plate she's also put in for me a brush because I use one of her brushes I use with my gel plate quite a lot to get some sweeps the gel plate won't be damaged by it or any of these tools a gel plate is much more resilient than you expect it to be this is quite soft okay but it's going to enable me to get a sweep of paint. I don't use brushes or tools like this to add paint to my gel plate. I use them to take it away. So it's what is left is going to give the mark in a very similar way to uh, Elizabeth's encaustic wax paintings. She's sweeping the wax away and printing with what is left. I'll be using Elizabeth's tools with acrylics on a gel plate, but it's possible to use them with any wet media. You could use them with acrylics, oil, oil and cold wax, inks, gouache or encaustic. Elizabeth herself creates encaustic monotypes. If you head over to her Instagram, Pinterest or YouTube channel, you will see a range of videos where she's using these tools on a large hot plate with pigmented wax pushing the wax around before laying the paper down to take the print. There's a range of paints that I'm going to use on my gel plate with Elizabeth Tools. So I've got some fairly cheap ones. These are by Amsterdam. These are a nice acrylic. These are heavy body. These are heavy body. But these are a thicker paint to these ones, which is why I have them in my collection, because sometimes I want a thicker paint than I have here. Uh, these, with the black tube, are golden's open range these are a slow drying paint and there's certain instances where i want a paint to dry slower 
Uh, then I've got fluid paints. These are a much looser paint. Uh, basically, it's like the stuff that's in the tube without the gunk. I'm not going to use any inks on this one. Uh, if I was using ink, that would be something like Golden High Flow. Uh, but I'm not going to use inks. I'm just going to stick around with these. In terms of paper, I'm going to use a mixture of uh, rice paper, which I really like. It's a lovely soft paper. Tea bag paper, which again is a delight. And some thin tissues as well, just to see what happens. Uh, and some wet strength tissue. That's pretty much it. Uh, but any paper will be fine. They're just the papers that I use because what I'm going to be doing with these is not making finished pictures. I'm making papers that I then use for collage. So that's where we're heading. The purpose of this video is not to teach you how to gel print uh, or make monotypes. The purpose is to demonstrate what these tools can do. If you want to know more about how to do monotype printmaking, then head to my website for monotype materials and methods. It's a three part online course.
I'm sure you're all keen to know how they washed up after that session. I wasn't great at wiping them. I was wiping off the paint as I went, uh, but I tend to work very quickly and don't stop when I'm in the flow. So they were getting a little bit gunked up by the end. Not a problem. I took them to my sink and I just washed them out with some dishwasher fluid, exactly the same way as you'd wash your plates. And they've come up absolutely pristine. I was a little worried by the brush because again, I left it, I brushed, I used the paint on it and it was uh, heavy body paint. It wasn't slow drying paint. Uh, and I was a little bit worried that I was going gunk to gunk it up. So I just put some hot water in a cup uh, and I just dipped, dipped the edge in where the, where the paint was and it's all come off absolutely beautifully. Okay, absolutely beautifully. So uh, I'm very, very impressed with these. Oh, the fun didn't stop there, I assure you. I went on and on and on for days making collage papers with these beautiful tools. For the trial pieces, I was just using black paint, but of course colour brings about a whole new world with lots of layers, different lines, using one tool on top on one layer and another tool on another, building up layers, allowing layers to dry. The joy of these large tools is you get large sweeps, large waves of pattern that I've not achieved with any other tool that I've used. And of course you can wipe areas away. You don't have to fill up your whole plate. You can experiment and explore. I'm particularly fond of iridescent paints and I use the large long one, the 12 inch one on my large gel plate, which is a 12 by 20 gel plate and created these papers. But also I've got these little guys too, okay? Uh, and I've created the small one here just by moving it around with this iridescent paint. And these as well. In terms of what uh, pattern you want on your silicon? Well, then there's a wide range of choices on Elizabeth's web website. I'm hoping that this video will help you make a decision about what it is you like. Uh, I've taken a lot of photographs and you'll find all of those on the blog post. And not only that, Elizabeth is offering a fantastic 15% discount on any orders if you use the discount code SALLY15. So thank you to Elizabeth for collaborating with me on this. I've really enjoyed it and I hope you will head over to her website and choose some tools for yourself.